With 2022 coming to an end, this is the time of year that I spend sort of reevaluating our finances, our investments, our budgeting, and just making sure that we've accomplished what we needed to in 2022 and that we're ready to begin the new year 2023 on the right foot. So what I want to do in today's video is cover sort of seven key things that I do this time of year. And actually, I have a bonus item, something I'm going to start doing for the first time this year. So I guess it's really eight things that I want to share with you today to help you get your finances, I guess, sort of closed for 2022 and ready to start 2023 fresh. Hey everybody, my name is Rob Berger. This is the Financial Freedom Show where we talk about investing and retirement and financial freedom. If those topics are of interest to you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Also, I send out a newsletter every Sunday morning. You can subscribe to the newsletter with the link below this video. So let's dive right in. I got seven things plus a bonus. So number one, uh, and something that's been really on my mind lately, and that is security. You may have heard that LastPass, which is a password manager, was recently hacked. Uh, if they don't have your master password, your password should be safe, should be still a little nervous. Uh, so I do a couple of things every year, actually four things uh, that I would that I do. One is I change all of the passwords, at least for any accounts that have you know, any uh, bearing on our finances. So bank accounts, credit cards, of course, investment accounts, even uh, something like a, a credit monitoring service. I change all of those passwords. I change the passwords for uh, my email accounts because I certainly don't want someone getting un unauthorized access to my email, particularly given that a lot of my financial accounts use my email to communicate with me. And so I want to change those passwords. and. Also, if you do use a password manager, I would highly recommend changing the password, your sort of master password for that as well. So that's the first thing that, that I do. The second thing is I just sort of make sure I've got all the security questions set. And most of the time they force you to do that. So not really much of an issue once you've got them all set. One thing I did recently though, was I went in and I reset many of them. And what I did was I, rather than just answering the question, like, you know, what was the name of your first pet or whatever the security question is, I would, I would give the answer, uh, but I would also then add some sort of arbitrary characters that, that are easy for me to remember, but have really nothing to do with the question being asked. So that if someone, you know, found out, you know, information about us, whether, you know, it was where you were married or, you know, where you were born or information that may be available on the internet, they couldn't simply give that to, as an answer to a security question and pass that level of security because they're not going to know the sort of arbitrary information that you've added uh, to the answer of the question. The third thing I do every year is review any access I've granted to third party apps, like a budgeting app, you know, or, or an investment tracking app. In my case, I tend to do a lot of that because I'm testing apps for purposes of this YouTube channel. In your case, maybe there's not that many, but I think it's worth reviewing. Maybe you tried out a budgeting app earlier in the year and you decided not to use it, and then you forgot about the fact that they are still downloading your data. I would want to revoke that. And then the last thing is to make sure you've got two-factor authentication set up on all of your important accounts. Uh, we do. One of the things I'm doing this year is trying to move away from text-based two-factor authentication where I can and to either use an app or even hardware uh, like a, like a YubiKey where they'll, they'll I give you the code on the key and you can type it in or sometimes it's based on biometrics like a fingerprint. I take security very seriously and so I think at least once a year you should review your security settings, go through these and I'm sure other uh, steps you could take to make sure your accounts are secure. All right, that's number one. Number two, I want to make sure I've got all the beneficiaries set on all of my accounts, my wife's accounts, that they're the, the, the correct beneficiaries, that there aren't any accounts where I've forgotten to list a beneficiary. And I just use this time of year to check. And so that's the second thing I think it's really important. The third thing is sort of a combination of current year and next year, and that is all of the contributions that we're going to make to retirement accounts, uh, health savings uh, accounts. Have we, have we maxed out if that's our plan for this year? And do we know what our plan is for next year? What accounts do we have? What are we gonna, how much are we gonna contribute? For IRAs, even for 2022, you may have until you file your taxes in 2023. So some of the 2022 contributions you may not have made yet, but even in that case, I wanna make sure I've got the cash, I know where it's coming from, and so that I'm just prepared for 2023. As part of this, I look at any uh, increases to the contribution limits, and there were some this year uh, in part because of the high inflation we've had that triggers some increases and in some contribution limits. So I want to make sure I know what those are and I'm prepared 
for 2023. So that's number three. Number four is just to make, to make a high level check of our investments, mainly asset allocation, and just to make sure we're not paying any fees we don't need to be paying. And so I do that in our case, I do that more frequently, but at a minimum, I think one ought to do it at least once a year. There are a couple of apps that I use and they're, they're free. Uh, the first one we've talked about it before is personal capital. This is just a demo version, but you can link all of your investment accounts. Uh, and once they're linked, you can very easily look at the asset allocation. You just go to investing and then asset allocation, and it gives you a pretty nice colored uh, view. We can make maybe a little bit bigger. Here we go. Uh, of your asset allocation between bonds over here and stocks over here, breaks out US versus international. You can see the numbers here. Uh, you can also drill down. So we could go into US stocks and I don't know, look at small cap value if that was of, of interest to you at the moment. So you can really get very quickly and easily a bird's eye view of your asset allocation. Um, and, and that's the first thing. The other thing I like to do is go up here to planning and retirement fee analyzer. And this tells us our weighted average uh, investment fees. Uh, if we don't have any additional fees, we can set this down to zero. You can see that this demo account uses low cost index uh, funds. So our total weighted average expense ratio is only four basis points. That's really the key number. Uh, but you know, maybe you've got an advisor and they're charging you, I don't know, we'll put it at one, 1%, uh, well, you can see what effect that's gonna have on your investments over the long term. You can also adjust for how much you're contributing each year to your accounts, if there's an employer match, and what you expect the annual growth to be. All of these factors will affect the fees that you pay going forward. And what this tool does is show you how those fees affect your wealth from your current age until whatever retirement age you've set in personal capital. So I think that's really important. I'll leave a link to this below the video. The other tool that I use is my own spreadsheet and I've made it available. You know, it's um, I'll leave a link to this article. Uh, you can see a link to the spreadsheet right here. And then if you scroll down, there's actually a video I did some time ago that walks through it. But here's what the spreadsheet looks like. I'm actually in the process of updating this and I will hopefully have it done in the first quarter of 2023 and we'll, we'll come out with a new video. I'm going to hopefully make it a little bit easier to use right now, though. It's just two two sheets. It's not that complicated. And I actually find this tool to be the easiest way to look at your asset allocation if you're in the process of rebalancing. But it's also an easy way to keep track of your balances and your and, and your asset allocation. So those are the two tools that I, I use uh, the most. They're both free. And I'll leave links to both of those below the video. Whatever tools you use, though, make sure you know what your asset allocation is, what fees you're paying. Do they make sense? Do you need to make any changes. All right. Number five, and this is something I'm actually working on now for, for our family, is creating an investment plan. I don't actually have sort of our investment approach in writing. And uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. I actually am kind of come up with a, sort of a three-step process. I want to list what our investing objectives are, what our, our principles, sort of key principles are, and what our methods are. So the objective, you know, in our case, it might be for retirement and, and having our money grow at a rate greater than inflation. Uh, in some cases, your objective may include capital preservation uh, for some part of your money. The objective might be uh, to, you know, saving to fund college education for child or grandchild. But, you know, why are we doing this? That's really the objective. It doesn't have to be fancy. One or two sentences, I think, is more than enough. And then I think key principles are really, really important. Uh, for me, there are things like keeping fees low, uh, keeping well uh, diversified, um, not making changes to our investment plan based on what the market is doing or what I think the market will do uh, in the future. This could literally just be a, a bullet point list of a, of a half a dozen principles. But these are sort of things that are set in stone. These are things that, that we're not going to violate. We're not going to go against these key uh, principles. And I think it's helpful to set those up you know, when you're not worried about the market, when you're not, you know, trying to make some big decision and, and you know, what, what's sort of the cornerstone of our investment uh, uh, process, you know, do it when you can really give it some thought. And again, it doesn't have to be complicated, but I think those key principles um, are, are really important. And then method is just, okay, how are we going to execute this? We've got, we've got our objective. We know what our sort of our, our key principles are. Now, how are we going to make this happen? And it might just be, here's, here's our asset allocation and here are the funds we're going to use to implement that asset allocation. Again, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or complicated, but I do think it helps to put in writing what your plan is. And then it's also going to help others in your family that, that some, at some point may have to take over 
may have to understand what you've done. So that's a part of the, our plan, uh, part of what, what I call the blue binder. That's a whole other video, uh, but that I'm preparing uh, this year. All right, the next item that I like to do is just a high level uh, list of how we spend our money in 2022 by category. In our case, it's not a lot of categories. We, I usually get it down to about 15. I'm, I'm not looking to, to, you know, look at every tiny thing down to the postage stamps that we bought, you know, at the grocery store four months ago. But I do want to know how much should we spend on the house? Uh, how, you know, how much do we spend on transportation? How much should we spend on vacation? What do we spend at the grocery store? What do we spend eating out? Uh, one of the things this does, which is really important when you get to, to retirement is over time, you can calculate your own inflation rate. Forget CPI. Uh, you can actually look at your own spending. It's okay. Uh, my spending went up by 7% last year or whatever the number is. Uh, but I like to, to understand where we spend our money and then prepare for 2023. Are we going to spend the same? Are we going to try to cut back? Is, is there a project that we've, we've got planned and we're going to spend a little more? Again, it's a very high level budget. Uh, I, again, I try to keep it to about 15 categories uh, of spending, but I think it's really important to see what happened in the last year, how that compares to previous years, and then what do we plan for in 2023. All right, number seven, real simple, but I, I prepare a net worth statement. I want to know, and I, again, I keep mine simple. For investments, I have retirement, non-retirement. For retirement, I break it down between traditional, Roth, and I include HSAs in the retirement, even though it's not really a retirement account. Uh, but I, I break it down into just those those three. For taxable, I simply break it down between cash and everything else. So again, I'm keeping the, the, the net worth statement very, very simple. If you have any liabilities, you list those. And then, you know, we include our house. Uh, we don't include personal property. I don't include the cars. You certainly could if, if you wanted to, but I tend not to include things like that that depreciate and eventually just get uh, replaced. Uh, but that's up to you. But again, our, our net worth statement's only a handful of lines, very, very simple. And I can see it from year to year. Unfortunately, this year, our net worth has gone down because the market has gone down and that's, uh, that's life, right? But uh, I wanna know what that is. So prepare a net worth statement. And really those seven things are the core of what I do at the end of the year. I did mention a bonus item. This is something that I've never done before, but I'm gonna do it this year. And that is I'm going to create videos for my wife and I guess ultimately for our children that walk through how I'm managing all of this. Here are all of our accounts. Here's why I've set it up this way. Here's our investments. Here's our asset allocation. Here's why I've done that. Here's the, here are the things you need to think about if you ever take over um, the, these investments. And uh, in my case, I'm gonna actually do some screen recordings. I know as, a, as someone that does video for YouTube, I've kind of already got the setup, but frankly, you don't have to make it complicated. In fact, it could just be audio. You don't even need video. If you just wanna walk through what you've done, why you've done it. You may include in there, say for a significant other that's not really all that into finances. You know, we've, most of us have that person. that's like one's really into the investing and the other one's like, yeah, I don't wanna hear about it. Uh, I think this sort of, at a minimum audio, if not also video, could give them a lot of comfort to understand what you've done, what you've got, what they need to do if they ever take over. Since I have a small, business, I'm actually going to do the exact same thing for our business because honestly, my family would have no idea about how I run the websites that I own, this YouTube channel. They just, they wouldn't know. And so I'm going to put all of that in a series of videos this year that I'll secure, that they'll have access to if something were to happen to me. So that's the bonus thing. I think that could be very, very effective in helping your loved ones if they ever have to take over your business or your investments uh, for whatever reason to understand what you've done and sort of how to move forward, perhaps, you know, without your help if if that were to happen. So there you go. Hope those proved helpful to you. Perhaps you have other things you do at the end of the year uh, that you found useful. Let us know, leave a comment uh, below the video. We'd like to hear about it. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments as well. I'll do my best to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.